What? I have an 80 what? What about Eric? Oh, good. Can everybody see that? We're good? Yep, we'll go about 25 minutes, then we'll take a break, okay? Okay. Um, so, I'll, I'm going to try and relate as much of this as I can to the project. Uh, the whole goal of the project is that you understand the, the two businesses that you're analyzing. Right? We're trying to make a decision on which one's the best investment, where would you invest your money as a wise investment advisor. So we need to understand the company, what they do, the in industry that they're in, the competitive environment. Um, then we drive down into the accounting. And that's part of why I, I was doing this. You need to understand if certain things happen in the business, what impact does it have on the balance sheet or the income statement? And the example right here was this gal, you know, started a landscaping business and she had $12,300 in deposits to the bank, right? Is that all of her revenue? No. She had $13,000 in revenue. 700 of it, people still owe her. So it doesn't show up in the bank yet. And I want you to understand that those things happen. So you've got, always, always need more board space. <clears throat> when you make a sale to someone, if you're giving them payment terms, Let's say I sell you a book for $100. So this is revenue, right? I'm going to put the big R right in front of it, revenue. And instead of getting cash, what do I get? Think of, I haven't said this yet, other class. Oftentimes in accounting, when you're trying to figure out what's going on, think in terms of what did I get and what am I giving up? So we went out and we mowed someone lo someone's lawn. We provided a service in exchange for $100 in cash, right? Good. What did I get? I got $100 cash. What did I give up? Well, I provided, I did this work. Okay, you could easily say, I got $100 in cash and I gave someone a book. I sold them a book and I got $100. Same sort of deal. But if we don't get cash, and we get a promise that they'll pay us later, we give them business terms, we get what's called an accounts receivable for $100. Everybody follow me? Okay. So eventually, this accounts receivable does get paid and turned into cash, but it the sale didn't become cash directly. It went through a two-step process to get there. Everybody follow the concept? Okay. Um, so if I put $100 in the bank and I have $100 in receivables, how much was my sales? Anybody? 200 bucks. He gets it. Anybody else agree with $200? Okay, good. Um, so these things can affect the income statement, they can affect the balance sheet, and that's part of what we saw in that example that I just kind of chugged through. Good? All right. Under GAAP, there are some primary goals in financial reporting. They are qualitative in nature, 
this we've seen already. The elements of a financial statement. We've seen the assets, right? We've seen the liabilities. We all know what those are. We know what stockholders' equity is, right? Everybody understands the concept of revenue. Sales, revenue, expenses. Here's one we haven't talked about, gain. If we recognize a gain as a company, anybody have an idea what that is? Is it a profit? We didn't actually, go ahead. A gain and a loss are very similar. One's positive, one's negative. They're very similar to revenue, but here's the difference. If we're in the business of landscaping, we mow somebody's lawn, that's revenue. Okay? We're in the business of mowing people's lawns. Every time we do it, it's called revenue. If we have a, an old lawn mower and we want to, we buy a new one and we sell the old lawn mower, is, when we sell it, is that money we got for the lawnmower revenue? No. We're not in the business of selling lawnmowers. It's, we categorize it different so that people aren't confused when we report the numbers. We don't want to go out and sell a $20,000 truck. Let's, we have a landscape business. We, make, we, we have revenue of $12,000 a year. We sold our truck one time for $20,000. Do we show revenue of $32,000? No. It makes the statements confusing. It, it does not present the accurate information to the reader of what's truly going on, right? So that $20,000 goes down under gain to separate it from your normal operating business activity. So if we sold the truck for $20,000 but we paid thirty dollars for it, we paid thirty dollars for, for the truck originally, we sell it for twenty. dollars do we have a loss or a gain? Do we make money or lose money? We lost money, so it would be a loss at that point, right? Everybody follow me? And that's the distinction between a gain or a loss and revenue. It's an important distinction. It makes a difference. Gains and losses are not necessarily recurring. If I'm a landscaper and I have revenue, that's what I do every day. It should re recur over and over again every year, right? Okay. So the qualitative characteristics, relevant. Think about relevant for a second. Is what I'm talking about relevant to the operations of the company? Is the data I'm presenting, does it fairly represent what actually took place? This also has a, a factor of timeliness with it. Some of you were asking me, uh, we went and looked up our companies and the financial statements that we found were from 2012 or 2011. Well, this is 2014. Is 2011 data going to do you any good on deciding if you want to invest in that company? It's not timely and it's not relevant to making a decision today. Okay? Reliability. That has to do with accuracy. This is the CPA's letter on the front that says the statements are fairly presented. You want to know that this, there's, you can rely on the data that's in the report. So that's one of the goals we strive for. Comparability. Part of GAP is we want to do the same thing. We want to present things the same way so that I can compare this year's financials to last year's financials to the year before that. And you can do an analysis through time to see if there's a trend. Are we doing better? Or are we doing worse? Do you want to buy a company that's doing better? Or one that's doing worse? I'd go for better. <laughs> you know? Consistency is, again, we're presenting things the same way every year. Uh, you know, you always present your classified balance sheet. You always present cash first. That's being consistent. You always present your property, plant, and equipment and your long-term assets separate from your current assets. Consistency. That way I can compare year to year or even company to company. And that's the other element of what you're going to be doing. And I may not have spelled this out clearly yet, 
you guys have picked two companies, so you understand you're comparing the two companies. But you're also going to be looking at each company in a two or a three year trend to see if they're doing better or worse. This year compared to last year and so on. So maybe company A looks better than company B, but then you look at it and you find out that company A is on this dramatic declining trend. Maybe you change your mind. I don't want company A anymore. Right? Questions, answers? This is not the silent part of the night. This is still interactive. Okay. Okay. Relevant. The book goes into a little bit more detail. Predictive value. Predictive meaning uh, if I, it, I develop a trend. If I, if I had made uh, sales of $100 last year and $50 the year before and $25 the year before that, what do I think this year is going to do? It should be like $200, right? Because you're, you're creating this upward trend. Uh, timeliness, you want to be able looking at current data. Uh, reliability means you can verify it. It can be audited. Uh, the representation is faithful. Neutrality. Neutrality is this um, term that's used in GAP. And it's becoming a secondary factor. But let's, let's talk about it. When you present financial statements, neutrality represents your approach to the information that you're presenting. Yes, it, it needs to be fair, but it needs to not skew the, the information or guide an investor one way or another. Okay? So if I'm going to go down and borrow money from the bank and I present my financials so that it looks like I have way more assets and very few liabilities just for the banker and then when I hand out financials to the owner instead of netting the asset, assets and liabilities and just showing total assets I present it a different way. You're, you're skewing the perspective. So that's what neutrality is. You want to present it uh, as if your bonus didn't matter. <laughs> that just kind of hit me. Right? If you're, if you're the accountant for a company and you get a bonus based on the profits of the company, you could be tempted to work on the, the income statement a little bit and make it look more profitable. Right? Because you get a bigger bonus. You're no longer neutral. You need to present it as if that were not the case. How would you present it no matter what? You know, no bonus involved. Okay? Um, we talked about comparability and consistency. Questions on neutrality or anything else? All right. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Did we just go backwards? Different slide, okay. We've talked about assets, liabilities before, right? Um, gain, they're, they're defining it as an increase in assets or settlement of liabilities from peripheral activities. That's more confusing than what I came up with, huh? Okay. We talked about that briefly. Okay, here we go. Here we are, chapter two, bunch of slides in, and they're just now getting to this, but you guys are already familiar with it, right? The basic accounting equation, questions on that? Everybody knows what an asset is. Everybody's comfortable with liabilities. All right. Um, the book uses, at least this textbook, likes to use real world examples of financial statements. Um, here's a balance sheet. And, you know, yes, it's Papa John's. It's the balance sheet, who, what, and when, December 31, 2008. It's in, it gives you the units because it's lopped off three zeros. It says it's in thousands of dollars. Okay? Notice what they've done. Assets, uh, property, plant, and equipment, non-current or other assets, liabilities, <coughs> current liabilities, other liabilities, stockholders' equity. They've, they've classified this. They've broken it down, assets into current, uh, property, plant, and equipment, and other. Okay, so you've got a total current and you've got total other and total assets. You've got current liabilities, total current liabilities, other long-term liabilities, 
total liabilities, and then just your typical stockholders equity section. So here's a example out of the book of what I was trying to show you with the class classified balance sheet. Everybody follows? Everybody's good? Okay. Go. Go, 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 go. Um, oh, I like this slide actually. The only book I've ever seen talk about it in similar terms. When you, when you analyze a, an accounting transaction, it's sometimes very helpful to think of it in terms of what did I get and what did I give up? Because any type of business transaction is an exchange, right? I'm going to sell you this and you're going to give me a dollar, right? <laughs> Whatever it is, you know? Um, or I'm going to provide a service for you. I'm going to write your name on the board for advertising today and you're going to pay me a dollar, okay? What did, you, what did I get? What am I giving up? Everybody's cool with the concept? Okay. Um, have we talked about this? Not in this class. It's the other class. <clears throat> We've talked about all of these, these categories so far, right? Cash, accounts receivable, uh, notes receivable, investments, property, plant, and equipment, depreciation. We've, we've talked about all those. In accounting, those are what we refer to as the accounts that you use. And the accounts are nothing more than a, uh, it's a category header for all the things that are similar. Um, a lot of non-financial people will, will refer to them as buckets, right? So if you're running a business and you have expenses, I have rent, expense, I'm going to put it in, in this file folder, and I have a telephone bill, I put it in this file folder, and I have a PG&E bill, I put it in this file folder. Well, those file folders are what we're calling accounts. So every time you pay a PG&E bill or you know, the water bill or they, when they come pick up your trash, those are all utilities. We put them in a utility bill. So you're grouping similar things together. So when we take those and we present them, the, the categories mean something. Otherwise, think of an income statement where you listed I can't see my income statement. I want it back. Think of a different kind of uh, income statement. We have revenue, and then we list it by day. On the first, I paid the, the rent. On the second, I paid the utility bill. On the third, I paid my wa wages to the employees. On the fourth, I paid another uh, PG&E bill. On the fifth, I paid something else. On the, it doesn't make sense. So we take those and we categorize them under these repairs, supplies, gas oil, wages, payroll taxes, into these accounts. And then your whole list of accounts becomes what's called a chart of accounts. So every company has a chart of accounts, which is simply a list of all these groupings that they use to subtotal all of their expenses, assets, liabilities, all of their transactions. Okay. A chart of accounts is always organized in the assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity plus revenue minus expenses format, the full accounting equation. So all of your assets are listed first. All of your liabilities are listed second. Equity third, revenues fourth, and expenses are always down on the bottom of the list. Good? Okay. Typically, no, 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 no. Come on, there's one more slide. It's out of order. We'll get to it in a minute. I'm going to skip. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to skip because I want to see this slide. I'm going to give up here in a second. Here we go. Here's a chart of accounts. <laughs> the last slide I'm going to show you tonight, we're going to insert now. Um, notice it's the name of the company. Here's their chart of accounts. Balance sheet accounts, and they, they list them. You know, assets first. Cash, accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid rent, equipment. Then you list your liabilities. They only have one. It's accounts payable. Owner's equity. Uh, then you have your revenue accounts and your expense accounts. You just list them in that order which for those of you who had accounting 151, 
that's what we did. We weren't too worried about it, right? In the modern world, everybody does accounting on a computer. And, you know, QuickBooks, I think, will let you do this. But everyone else forces you to use a number because computers work real well with numbers, right? So each account name is associated with a number so that when you're entering the information into the computer, you use the number in place of the name as you're entering the data. Okay? So the numbering sequence matches the same assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, expense, order. So your assets are, are typically, I like four digits, so I go 1,000. Your liabilities are 2,000. Owner's equity is three. Revenue is 4,000. All of your expenses are 5,000, five through 9,000. Something like that. Good? Questions? Yes, ma'am. So the salary is designated with 511, but then there's expenses in between 511 and 514? There would be. Like a 512, that would be? Yes. So they only show two, but you'd have a whole ton of other expenses down here. Is there an index for these things? You know what? Every company you ever go look at, their chart will be different. Absolutely. Just know that it exists. Know the basic format. Don't go memorize this out of the book because that's not, you know, the, the end all be all. Everyone uses this numbering scheme. Um, and the book uses three digits. I like four because it gives you more room in between to add something later. And bigger companies like a GM or an HP, they will do regions and departments. So you'll end up with things like, um, you know, 01 being a region, North America, and then a department, uh, say, 05, which is uh, West Coast, and then your account, uh, 5011, which is wages. So you, you see it broken out where they can really drill down into things. And co computers lend themselves to this really, really well. But as long as you understand this basic concept, we're in good shape. Okay? There was a hand over here. Uh, but they do leave holes in between. Um, oh, yeah. That's why I like four digits, because you leave more space in between them in case you have to add something in. If you run out of numbers, then you end up with something out of order. You have to find the closest open spot. Absolutely. Other questions? Okay, who's way too excited and needs to calm down? <laughs> <laughs> yes? Okay, so it's, uh, go ahead, question. Um, in my past experience, I've seen income statements not use the word revenue, but, uh, but use the word income instead of the word revenue. Is that so common now anymore, or is it strictly revenue? Here's, here's the standard convention, and you will see people use other things, but I don't want to crucify them. I don't want to say it's wrong, because it, it conveys the right information. You understood it, right? And that's really all we're trying to achieve. We're communicating information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Typically, uh, if you use revenue, that implies that you are providing a service. You're an accountant, you're a, an attorney, um, you know, some, some professional who's providing a service and getting paid in exchange. If they throw in the word sales, that implies we're selling a thing. Okay? And those are the two that you typically see. Yes? So if you had both, then you would have sales and revenue? So you'd list two different lines. Sometimes you'll see like, uh, I like using Macy's as an example because most people understand what it is. It's a department store. So they have a, they have sales, shoe department, sales, uh, jewelry department, sales, women's dresses, sales, you know, you can go down and list all of them and then show total sales and bang, you're done. Uh, if you have, um, in rare examples or instances, you'll see somebody who is a consultant. You know, I provide some sort of service. I repair your computer, repair your computer, repair your computer. But sometimes maybe he'll build one and sell you the actual machine. So he'll have sales for the, the machine, and he'll have revenue for all the other. Okay, so 
Yeah. Right. So you'll see both. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? All right. So you guys have a little bit of a, a breather and can calm down. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a five minute break. So it's 7 30 now. We'll go 7. Last chance for questions. I haven't updated it, so just write your name on it. Okay? I, I didn't go out to the web and pull down the new list. Okay. So, off we go. I should have erased. I didn't have time. I'm going to introduce you to a concept here. <clears throat> Remember earlier I mentioned that uh, we have something called debits and credits, right? So let's talk about how transactions get recorded. This is a really technical, involved, graphical representation of, of how it happens. This is called a T account because it looks like something Vanna would turn on as she, you know, <laughs> right? Okay. A T account has two sides. There is the Let's start simple for everybody. Left side <laughs> and the right side. Okay? <clears throat> Which is good. Where'd the color markers go? Okay. So. Accountants never talk in terms of left and right. <clears throat> Anybody ever been out on a boat? Do they have left and right on a boat? No. No. What, are they, what do they have? Port and starboard. Port and starboard. Okay. So technical term for, for people out on, on a boat. Accountants have their own technical term. We have what's called debits and credit. Okay. So unfortunately, you're going to have to memorize this. And we're going to all talk in terms of debits and credits. Because I don't want to hear anybody use left and right after tonight, OK? For tonight, it's OK. Left and right's OK. Next week, no more. So do whatever you got to do to memorize it. You know, paint your pinky on your left hand red for debits and the right one blue for credits. Whatever you got to do, OK? Um, and this becomes important because we also no longer have positive and negative balances. We just have debit and credit balances. So let's dive into it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and approach it in a backwards fashion. Let's just go through the, the presentation. Um, so when we have a transaction, a business transaction, remember it's always something that's negotiated where I'm going to receive something in exchange for something I'm going to give up, right? Or I'm, I'm going to give up this pen, I'm going to sell it to you, and you're going to give me a dollar, right? Okay. So the steps to recording that transaction, what any business does when they record it in their, their accounting system, you know, they look at the event, they go, what happened? What accounts are affected? Right? We talked about the accounts, cash, accounts receivable, wages expense, accounts payable, revenue. There's all kinds of accounts. We know what those are now. So what account is affected? You guys remember from last week that uh, accounting is a double entry system. So there's always two entries. So guess how many, tra how many accounts are always affected? Two. A minimum of two. There can be more, but there's a minimum of two. So think about it. If I sell this to you for a dollar, sir, what, what is one of the accounts that's affected? For me, I'm going to sell this to you. What do I get? I get cash. So one of the accounts that's affected is cash. What's the other one? OK, you're making it too hard. I made a sale, right? I have revenue. I have a sale. So in the simplest format, I made a sale and I got revenue. Cool? Okay. Classify, meaning uh, determine 
uh, what those accounts are, assets, liabilities, expenses, revenue. Uh, determine the amount of in increase or decrease. If I made revenue, is my revenue account going up? If you pay me cash, does my cash balance go up or down? Up, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> makes my skin crawl. Apply the left-right rules. Apply the debit and credit rules, <laughs> okay? And then record the entry in a, in a T account. I'm going to do a little erasing. I'm going to create another T account. The left side is which side? Debit. The right side is which side? Okay. So we need to think in terms of assets equals liabilities plus stockholders' equity plus revenue minus expenses. The full accounting equation, right? All right. All right. You guys remember this from last time. We put that across the board and we did some transactions. Remember that? We're going to do the same thing. But we're going to use these now. So let's do our simple transaction. I'm going to sell you a pen. What do I get? I get an asset, cash. So let's make it 10 so that it's easier to read. I get $10. I just made revenue, $10, correct? 10 equals 10. Everybody's happy because it's in balance, right? Okay. So if this is cash and this is revenue, can you guys see how the equal sign has an effect on this? Assets are on the left side, so to increase cash, it's a debit. Revenue is on the other side of the equal sign. So to increase revenue, it's a credit. My debits equal my credits is the same thing as saying my accounting equation is imbalanced because 10 equals 10. We're just being that much more technical about it. Everybody follow so far? Okay. So I need color. So I've given this one away. Assets always, always, always increase on which side? Debit side. I'm going to write that in here. Assets. Liabilities always, always, always increase on which side? Liability. Equity increases on which side? Okay. Revenue increases on which side? Expenses increase on which side? Because remember, it's a minus sign on this side of the equal side. Sign. It pushes it back over here. Good? Okay. Now there's one thing left. If there's ever a dividend paid out, right, or a single owner takes money out, let's just call it dividend, a dividend account also increases on the debit side. Why is that? A dividend is, takes equity and gives it away, right? Gives it to the owners. So if you're making equity go down, what's the opposite of a credit? A debit. So it goes over here. Cool? There's, you got to memorize this. A lot of you already have, but you got to memorize this because we're going to use this day in, day out. This is how everything gets posted in the accounting world. Every transaction gets recorded in something similar to a T account based on this rule. Good? Who's scared? I'm scared. <laughs> this scares me. <clears throat> Here's a little cheat sheet, though. 
This is the little cheat sheet. I have a better cheat sheet here in a little bit. <clears throat> so this shows you assets, increases in, in, are always on the left side. If you decrease it, you do that on the right side. Okay? So if I wrote a check, let's go back over here. Remember a minute ago I had a sale? I had a $10 sale and a $10, $10 sale, my debits equal my credits. Okay, so if I write a check for $2 to pay somebody, cash is going which way, up or down? So I make the $2 entry on which side? On this side, okay? So that also tells you how do you calculate the balance in the account? You add up all of these and you subtract all of those. Okay, my balance right now is eight. Can everyone follow? Yes, no, maybe. I just took too big of a leap. We'll get there. Okay. So liabilities increase on the credit side, decrease on the debit side. Equity increases on the credit side, decreases on the debit side. Good? <clears throat> we know this already. Double entry system, right? Okay. So, this is all part of the posting concept. They're just going through it in different words again. Identify the accounts. Figure out are they increasing or decreasing. Apply the left right rules. The book is very big on knowing if the account you're affecting is an asset, a liability, or stockholders' equity. Um, and then prove that you're in balance after you post it. Good. Debits equal credits. Okay. If your debits don't equal your credits, panic. <laughs> Stop me and ask questions. Come on. Nothing? I'm not this good. You gotta ask questions. All right. So here's an example. We're gonna go through just a few. Um, we're going to issue common stock in exchange for cash, right? This is like starting a brand new company. I'm going to give you stock in exchange for you give me cash. So we as the company, what do we get? Cash. And we give up capital. This is in the old format, assets, liabilities, owner's equity format, like we did last week, right? Is it in balance? Yes. We're good with this. Let's see. What did we do here? Oh, it tells us. Otherwise, I'd ask you. But look, notes payable goes up. This is a liability. And we got more cash. We went and borrowed money from somebody. Right? You can tell right out of the gate. Um, here we went and equipment goes up. So we bought some equipment. Cash has a decrease. We paid part of it in cash. We paid part of it in notes payable. How many accounts are affected there? Three. Remember I said there's always at least two? I corrected myself when I said there's always two. There's always at least two. This is called a multiple-legged entry. Right? Multiple-legged multiple entry, yeah. Legged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a technical term. <laughs> so here we go. Now here's, this doesn't make sense. We borrowed money, we got cash. Notes receivable, we lent somebody money and gave up the cash we just borrowed. Huh? <laughs> Whatever, it's an example. <laughs> but would you do that in the real world? Probably not, unless you're, you know, unless you can borrow it cheap and lend it to somebody else for a really hot, hot, much higher interest rate, right? Think about bank accounts. You go down and you open a savings account. What kind of interest rate do they pay you? Point one percent, right? Something. And if you go borrow money, how much do they charge you? Six, seven, eight. Yeah, they're making good. They're making a good spread there. <laughs> All right. 
So you guys get the idea of how we did it last week. I got you started on that ahead of time. I want to jump to this week. Da, 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 da. We're going to come back to this. I want to see this. Here we go. So debits are always on the left. Credits are always on the right. I will probably repeat that way too much, but you do have to memorize it. Good? Okay. Debits are towards the door. Credits are the other side. Good? Whatever it is. Whatever it is. You know, put some nail polish on one shoe tip or something. Whatever it is. Okay. Um, go back. Okay, so by definition, a debit is always on the left side. A credit is always on the right side. They never switch. Always, always, always. Okay? For every debit, there must be a credit. For every credit, there must be a debit. There can be, for every debit, there could be more than one credit, but there's always at least one to keep you in balance. Um, yeah, okay. So, I want to do that one third. <clears throat> right now I'm using T accounts. Yes, sir, go ahead. Would it be safe to say that when you have more than one credit, it always has to equal the amount on the debit side? If you have two, three, four, five, six credits, the total of all of them must equal the one, two, three, four, five debits that you have. They always equal. The sum of all your debits will always equal the sum of all your credits. So it won't ever, you won't have one debit and then have two credits split off equal that one debit? Yes. So you'll have a debit for $100 and two credits for $50. You're in balance though, right? The sum of all your credits equals the sum of all your debits. Okay? Okay. So I'm using this visual representation called a T account. To, to teach you this concept. Accountants truly use what's called the general journal to record every transaction though. It's a little bit different visual format, but it does the same thing. And then every time a transaction happens in business, in a company, it gets recorded in the general journal first. It's oftentimes referred to as the book of original entry, the first place. You take the general journal, which is a list of all your transactions in chronological order. Right? Everybody in here has gone to an English class where they made you write a journal. Yes? Okay. Open the book, day one. I came in today, sit down. I had to sit next to someone who picks their nose, blah, 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 you know. The next day, you open it up, you go right below that, day two. My shoe is untied, I have gum on it. Whatever it is you write, okay? Day three, below that. Day four, flip the page, day five. So it's just a chronological list of every transaction. The general ledger is your chart of accounts, where you take the chronological list and you break them down and put them into those folders so that all of your rent items go together and all of your utility items go together and all the assets that you buy go together in their own general ledger account. Okay? So there are two different ways of looking at it but this is the place where everything gets recorded, the last place it gets recorded, sometimes called the book of final entry. Okay? So everything gets posted in two places, general journal, general ledger. However, week two, I've taught you key accounts. It's a great visual representation. You will use it for the rest of your life. I still use it today. People come into my office and we try and figure out, where'd this go and how'd this end up? Why is this balance? Okay, let's figure it out. And we start, <laughs> right? So, you know, I use this thing all the time. It's a great tool. But just so you know, this is not what accounting records really look like. Good? All right. Let's back up one more. So, for those of you who had Accounting 151, we had the accounting cycle. This book has a much less glamorous representation of it. 
Um, the accounting cycle. We always start at the beginning of a month and we record transactions. This is what we've been talking about. Analyze the transactions, figure out what accounts are affected, how much, do they increase, do they decrease, post it to the general journal, post it to the general ledger. Okay? Analyze the transactions, record them, post them. At the end of an accounting period, whether it be a month, a year, or whatever, you take all of your general ledger accounts, all of your key accounts, and you pull the totals out. Did we do a trial balance last time? Yes, we did, right? Okay. Anybody else? We did a trial balance, yes? So you pull the balances from all of your accounts and you prove that they're all your debits equals all your credits. That's a trial balance. Um, we do adjustments to that, which is something I'm going to cover when we get into chapters three and four. And then we prepare the financial statements from the adjusted trial balance. And then we do closing which all we do is set up the accounts for the following month. I just want you guys to understand the concept, but we're going to go through all those steps during the next, it's only 15 weeks now, right? <laughs> 15 to go. <laughs> okay. We can cover that in 15 weeks, right? <laughs> okay. Left side. Debit. Everybody say it with me. Debits. Right side. Credits. Good. Okay. <laughs> Common mistakes. You know, the whole point is we want to always be in balance, right? Debits equals credits. Our accounting equation needs to always remain in balance. Sometimes you get to the end. It's not. It happens, right? For those of you who've done projects for me, sometimes it's not. And that means you made a boo-boo somewhere. Every time. Every time. Not every time. No. Yes. Yes. So, a lot of times it's, it's a math error, right? When you determine the ending balance in your account, instead of going 10 minus 2 is 8 and that's the right balance, you'll go, oh, it's 12. Or when you create your trial balance, uh, you'll do the math wrong as you total it down. Um, what happens if, remember our sale when we sold the, the, the pen for 10 bucks? We got cash. What did we give up? The pen, the sale, right? What if I only recorded the cash and not the other side? I'm out of balance, right? Everybody understands that. That's a common, okay, that's a common boo-boo. Um, the other one is, yeah, recording them both as debits or both as credits. Are we in balance at that point? No. We're out of balance by twice the amount, right? If I recorded them both as debits, I'd be uh, out of balance by 20 bucks, correct? Okay. Yes, you'd be off by 20 bucks instead of 10. Right. Um, recording an amount incorrectly. If you record them both incorrectly, if you record both the debit and the credit as 8 instead of 10, harder to find. But if you record 1 as 10 and 1 as 8, you'll find it. Take you some time, but you'll find it. Um, we talked about that. Cool. Every account has a number and a name. That's your chart of accounts, right? Uh, balance sheets first. Assets first, liabilities second, equity third, revenue, then expenses. All of your accounts are always in that order. Okay? Here's the chart of accounts. That's why I wanted to show it to you earlier because we ended up kind of using it. All right. This comes into play when we do closing, which was the last item on that list, the accounting cycle. There are permanent accounts and there are temporary accounts. A permanent account always has a balance in it. When I get to the end of an accounting period, that balance goes over and it becomes the beginning balance for the next accounting period. Think about it like this. You go down to the bank, you put money in the bank. The end of the month comes, they send you a statement. It tells you how much money you had at the end, right? 
The following day, which is a brand new month, March 1st, how much money do you have in the account? Same. You have the same amount, right? Because it carries over. Your money doesn't go away just because the end of the month came. You'd be pissed if it went away, right? <laughs> well, that's different. That's a different issue. But if we're doing an income statement and I want to know how much revenue we had in February, when I get to March 1, do I want to take that $13,000 and keep adding to it? Or do I want to start over at zero so I can figure out how much revenue I had in March? You start over at zero. So a permanent account, the balance carries forward. A temporary account starts out every accounting period, month or year, at zero. So let's back up. Your permanent accounts tend to be your balance sheet accounts, cash, accounts receivable. right? If somebody owes you money, just because March 1st comes, do you forgive the debt and go, oh, it's over? No. no. I gave him 30 day terms, right? No one would give 30 day terms if it went away at the end of a month. Um, if you borrowed money from the bank on a note payable, at the end of the month, does it go away? You don't owe him the money anymore? Mm -hmm. No. So your balance sheet accounts tend to be your permanent accounts. Your income statement, we want those to start over so we can figure out what our revenue and our expenses are from month to month and figure out what our net income was for January versus February, February versus March, and so on. So those go to zero at the end of every month in the closing process. And that's why they're called temporary. Good? Okay. T accounts we've talked about. I'm going to skip that because we've beaten that one up. And we'll do it some more. Uh, I'm skipping that one because I don't want to confuse you. Here we go. I stole this slide from somewhere else. <clears throat> this is the slide. Remember all the slides, all the PowerPoints are on Blackboard? Go home, get on Blackboard, find this slide, print it out. Go in your bathroom right at the top of the mirror and tape it to the mirror so you stare at it every day while you're brushing your teeth. This is it. You print out another copy, stick it under your pillow so you can sleep with your head next to it. Okay? <laughs> this is the key. And this tells you everything you need to know. Asset accounts increase on the debit side. Liability accounts increase on the credit side. Capital increases on the credit side. Revenue increases on the credit side. The drawing I talked about, the dividends increase on the debit side and expenses increase on the debit side. Here's another way to, to remember this. There's one, two, three that increases debits, and one, two, three that increases credits. Right? If it's got to stay in balance, that makes sense, right? Three on one side, three on the other, yes? Okay. Um, there was something else I was just going to say about that. Oh, well. Forgotten. So this is the super slide. Use it, memorize it, love it, live it. We're going to use a lot, okay? Questions before I go on? Pretty straightforward? Okay. <clears throat> Remember earlier I mentioned there's, there's two places where transactions get recorded. The, the general journal, that journal where it's just chronological order, and the general ledger. So to show you what a general journal looks like in the real world, this is a close approximation of it. Every general journal looks very similar to this. There's going to be a date out here, though. Remember I said they're in chronological order? So you would put February 1, here's what happened. The next one, February 2, here's what happened. And you end up with a, here's your account that's affected. Here's the other account that's affected. Here's how much and which direction. So we can sit here and, and I can walk through this. I can look at this and kind of tell you what's going on. This company went out and they bought some, some equipment for $10,000. They paid $2,000 in cash for it and they borrowed the rest. They have a note payable for the other $8,000. Okay, I have equipment, which is an asset. Assets increase on which side? Debit. Debit. 
So we record the increase, the purchase, as a debit. Cash is an asset. I gave up cash, so cash is going down. Cash decreases as a credit. Good? Note payable is a liability. Liabilities increase on which side? Credit. What? Credit. credit. I thought you said right. <laughs> credit side. That side. Left side. Or, sorry, right side. <laughs> I'm facing you. I'm all messed up. What time is it? Can I go home now? <laughs> so liabilities increase on the right side, the credit side. So my liability increased, my cash decreased, and my asset increased if you want to talk about it in those terms. And the book likes to do that, so that's why they have the plus A. Asset increased, asset decreased, liability increased. Good? Everybody follow along? And typically the other part of the rule is, well there's two more parts of the rule. Notice the caveat, or the, the convention here. That's the word I'm trying to find. The debit entry is left hand justified all the way over and then you indent for the credit entries so that the account name matches the column for the debits, the account name for the, the credits match the column for the credits. It makes it visually easier to read. And the other uh, thing that's missing is typically you come down right below this and you indent a little further and there's a description of what happened here. We bought a new whatever it is, from so-and-so, invoice number, blah, blah, blah. There's a description of what's going on. Good? Okay. Everybody excited about this? Yeah. This one's big. big. This is big. We're making big, big strides now. <clears throat> okay. So this is the general journal, and then you take this and you post it to the general ledger. <clears throat> so for fun, Let's post that to the general ledger. I just need to create one, right? Mm -hmm. This is going from the general journal, which is chronological into the ledger, which is... Account driven, account. category driven. Got it. Okay? So, <clears throat> what accounts am I going to need? I'm going to need cash. I'm going to need equipment. I'm going to need note payable. Good? Okay. I'm a little slow. Walk me through it. Which side is this? 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 And which side is this? So, asset. Asset liability. It doesn't matter. Never matters. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, why is it a DR? <laughs> <laughs> so one of my students knew once. Was it you guys? Uh -huh. oh, it may have been two semesters back. It's Latin, and I've long since forgotten. <laughs> okay? Latin. Yes. Question, yeah, it's a great question. Everyone asks, and I just and then I get busy and I don't go look it up. But I've long since forgotten. I had to answer it on a test once though. <laughs> so, you won't. <laughs> All right, so let's start with the debit, you know, start at the top. Our debit entry is to equipment and we know it's a debit so I'm going to put the $10,000 entry here. Okay? The next entry is to cash, it's a credit. So I'm going to come and put the $2,000 entry to cash. And then the other one's note payables. It's also a credit. Post the $8,000 increase in the note payable. Do my debits equal my credits? Yes. I'm in balance. Good? Okay. So everybody follows how you would go from the general journal to the general ledger. And this isn't what they look like, but it's a great visual representation. We'll get there. <laughs> oh, then they're going, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> here's a different example, though. And here's what I like about having a, another example. This shows you there's a beginning balance. I just drew those up there and threw that transaction up. 
but there's always, you know, you're always entering something into the middle of a month where there's a running balance, a running total sort of thing. So we've got a balance. We have a debit to cash and a credit to capital. So they obviously uh, sold some more stock, right, in exchange for cash. Got cash, gave up stock. So to calculate the balance, it's debit plus debit. There's no credits, so I don't have to subtract. And then you come down and you write the balance on the side that the balance belongs. So I have a 6000 plus 2000 I have an $8,000 debit balance. So we write it on the debit side. Okay? Don't get confused and come down and write it over here because you'll put it on your uh, trial balance as a credit and then you're out of balance and it's all blown up. Okay? So a $1,000 credit and a $2,000 credit, all of a sudden I have a $3,000 credit balance. Notice I didn't say negative. I have a credit balance. Capital increases on which side? The credit side. So this is a normal balance for that account. A credit balance is normal for that account. On an asset, they increase on the uh, debit side, right? So a debit balance is a normal balance for an asset account. Good? Abnormal. Abby normal. You, if I had, this happens, right? You said it earlier. I have $6,000 in cash. I write $10,000 in checks. So I'd have a credit for that. My balance would be a $4,000 credit balance. Okay? Will the banks clear the, will the checks clear my bank account? No. But technically I have negative $4,000 in cash or a credit balance of $4,000. Good? Okay. Other questions? All right. Let's see. Here's another one with a note payable. Same sort of thing. We talked about classified balance sheets, right? We talked about that earlier. And a better example than that. But we use this. Classified means current and non-current, yes? Okay. Here's our ratio for tonight. This is the fun stuff. Current ratio. Current assets divided by current liabilities. What does this tell you? Well, think about it. Current liabilities are what I'm going to I'm going to have to pay for those with it, with cash in the near future, right? Cuz they're current. So how much cash or things close to cash do I have to pay those with. So if this number is bigger, I'm good. If this number is bigger, I have a problem. Everybody see it? Okay. Good ratio analysis. Now, uh, did I talk about why we use ratios? No. No? Okay. Um, think about it this way. Earlier we had a company that was in billions of yen in a homework problem? Okay. They have on their on their balance sheet they listed one billion four hundred and ninety well one yeah one trillion four hundred and ninety billion yen in cash, right? And they lopped off a whole bunch of zeros to get there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> What if my comparative company is a little bit smaller? You know, this is, this is HP. And what if your comparative company is some startup and they have cash that looks like this? How do you compare those two companies? If I turn this within, its, within each individual company into some sort of a ratio, an analytical, they become very easy to compare because they'll both be, you know, 1.1 or 0.8. But I can compare that, right? Remember I said more assets than liabilities is good. So a current ratio of 1.1 implies I can pay all my current liabilities. 
Well, one of 0.8 implies I might have a tough time doing that. But I can compare two companies that are dramatically different in size because they both just come out to a little ratio. And that's what you're going to be doing in the project. So I'm going to teach you lots of these ratios. Cool? Okay, questions? Yes? Um, notice none of these are, are one or greater than one. That implies that liabilities are bigger than current assets. So they're going to struggle to come up with the cash to pay that. Uh, having cash to pay your bills is referred to as being liquid. How much liquid cash do you have? So they're a little cash strapped or illiquid or they have a lack of liquidity. Good? Okay. Great question. Other questions? No? All right. Um, all right. You guys still wide awake and want to talk cash flows or you want to save it for later? It's 20 after. Um, I, like to, I like to save the cash flows for, there's one whole chapter at, at the back. I think it's 12 and we do this all. I don't want to confuse you. So I'm going I'm to stick with what I've always done. I'm not going to change my, not changing my MO here. Okay? Um, so a cash flow statement. Yeah. It means you might have a liquidity challenge. <laughs> okay. Um, let's approach it this way. Remember the fourth financial statement, the statement of cash flows? You calculate uh, ending cash and it matches the, the number on the balance sheet. That's the key thing I want you to remember for now. And it's broken down into th uh, three segments. Cash that was generated by or used by operating activities. Operating activities, sorry. This is the business that you're in, right? We buy and sell stuff and it generates cash or it uses cash. Investing is separate than that. Than that. If we buy property, plant, and equipment, or we purchase investments, um, that, is, that is an investing activity. If we lend money to somebody else, okay, well, to a franchisee. Um, financing is borrowing money or lending money to others. Here's the key I want you to remember there. And I said this last week. When a company sells its own stock to generate cash, that's a financing activity. We're selling ownership interest in this company to generate cash to run the company with. Good? Okay. If we get that, I'm pretty happy. So, questions? I keep moving because this light shines right in my, my eye. Uh, questions? Who has the sign-in sheet? Please return the signing sheet. Thank you. You didn't sign it? Too late. <laughs> you had a question. Debit and credit. Oh, she knows what they mean. I Googled it. Google. <laughs> I tell you. Um, so, yeah, it is Latin. So, debiri means to owe, cadiri means to entrust. Oh, I, I found to, to believe. Yeah, that's what I found too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's broach another subject because it will come up. Okay. Off. 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 What does the R stand for in the Latin? Yeah. I'm surprised no one's asked yet, but let's knock this out because someone will. We have a cash account, right? Cash increases on which side? Debit side. Okay? 
that's our cash balance. When you get your bank statement at the end of the month and you look at it, it shows you all your deposits. And when they make a deposit to your account, what do they do to your account? Credit. They credit it. Who's right? I had a gal that worked at a bank sit here and argue with me once. It just for on and on and on and on and on. Because it's not the bank's money. Okay. Now, hang on. You cheated. You've been in my class before. You've heard this. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta change hats, right? I'm the company, my hat is, it's my money, I own it, it's an asset, okay? If you're the bank, is it your money? No, is it an asset? Is it? No. To the bank, it's a liability, they owe you the money. It's an accounts payable. So when they credit the account, they're crediting your account. It's a liability to them. They're just looking at it from the other side of the table. Okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, they owe you the money. It's a liability to them. Good? Okay. Other questions? Look at the little fun stuff you learn, right? <laughs> Can't wait to go home and pop that one on your significant other, huh? <laughs> All right, yes ma'am. Um, in related to the project, I don't know if you to go Project there. questions, please. Are you going to go over like what's due the next week or what's like, detail of what's due or is there something that's needed to be due? Well, it's on the schedule. Well, it is, yeah. Okay, like, but I'm more than happy to talk about it. So for tonight, I'm hoping everybody's got their team written down on a list. Uh, the name of your two companies, uh, the current stock prices for the two companies, and how many shares you bought. Okay? I, I take it that's a no. Oh, oh no, she has it all. She has it. It's not worth laughing about that. Okay. So that's due tonight. Um, the, the chapter one homework we went over, that's under the covered in class column. Uh, next week, you're going to sit here and we're going to go over the homework for chapter two. And we're going we're gonna to lecture chapter five. Then, the following week, February 19th, a Wednesday. You can turn that off. We're going to have an examination.